Hello, how are y'all doing today? My name is Bernie Thompson and today we're going to take a look at a 2015 Ram 1500 truck. The problem with this truck is a no start. So you can put the ignition key in and turn it, but nothing happens. We can get the dash lights to come on if we open the door with a lock switch or my fob assembly will do that. Let's take a look at this truck and see what's wrong with it. First, we need to go ahead and connect to the car with a scan tool. We're going to use a factory Dodge tool. Now that we got the Dodge factory scan tool connected to the truck, the scan tool can't communicate with the vehicle. We have no VIN number and no communications with this scan tool. In order to diagnose this Dodge Ram 1500 truck, we're going to need an oscilloscope. The oscilloscope that we're going to use is the ATS eScope Elite. This scope is a very powerful scope that will allow us to view the waveforms on the COM buses so we can try to figure out where this problem is. In order to use the scope, you need a wiring diagram. So we're going to get our Mitchell wiring diagrams. And right here, we can see that we have the ignition module. That's the key switch, basically. And this is going to have a power ground and a comm line. Now, the comm line is a K line. K lines work on 12 volts. So I'm going to have 12 volts and the modules are going to be pulling them to ground and releasing them in order to communicate. I am going to talk to this module back here and it's the radio frequency hub module and it says it's located on the back rear firewall behind the seat. Now this is going to be a much harder module to get to so when I diagnose a car I want to start with the quickest easiest access. That's going to be the ignition module. So let's go ahead and get down to the ignition module. The first lead we're going to connect is the negative scope lead. The only appropriate place that we can place this is where we know the lowest point of potential on the vehicle is. That's the negative post of the battery. So I'm always going to go to the battery first. We're going to connect that. We're going to back probe the ignition switch. We're going to put the red in the power, the green in the ground, and the yellow is the white green wire, which is our K line or our communication bus line. Let's take a look at the scope. Now that we have the scope connected, we need to look at the signals. We can see that the red has got power and we've got battery voltage and we see our K line being high, but it's not being pulled low. There's no communications. The ground line is at ground, so that's good. What we want to do now is cycle the ignition module and we can see that we do have pulses when we do that. So what we want to do is we want to go get into the measure and deep record and we want to start the recording. Now we want to take the zoom window and we want to zoom in on these. Now we can see that we've got something happening here. We've got pulses, but this is just a pulse to ground. Guys, this isn't communications. Communications has to carry data packs off of the K line. Something's wrong with this communication and this is a single wire that goes to the wireless hub module in the back behind the seat. In order to know what's wrong with the car, we're going to have to pull the seat out of the vehicle and get access to the module off the rear wall. Let's do that. Now that we've removed the rear seat from this Ram 1500, we have access to the wireless hub module. Now we're going to need to be able to get into the connector so we can look and view these signals with the eScope Elite so we can find what the problem is. We've back probed the wireless hub module and we've got the yellow and red in the high speed can and we've got the green on the K line. These are all communications that go to this module. Now let's go see what the scope shows us. Now when we hit the unlock or lock switch, we can see that we get the can but we have no K line. What we want to do is come to measure and deep record. We want to deep record this and we want to go in and we want to see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and stop it. We're going to take the zoom window and we're going to zoom in on this. Again, we can see no K-line transmissions. I want to make a note on the CAN bus down here. Notice how the CAN bus is pulled low at about 1.8 volts. This should be at 2.5 up here. So we have a problem right away. 
On some cars when you see this, this is like the ignition switch is in accessory mode. If you go to accessory mode, I'll get a waveform like this where I got a low voltage being pulled up. On other cars, there's no accessory mode. In that case, we would have a power problem on one of the modules. So what we want to do is we want to check the wireless hub module and we want to see the powers and grounds and make sure they're good at this module at least. We're right here. But this usually is some type of a power problem. Again, notice how low the CAN bus is. The CAN bus should be at 2.5 being pulled up and down. And this is CAN high. This is not what we see and we have no K line at all. Let's go check the powers and grounds. We've back probed the wireless hub module. Red is power, green is ground, the yellow is still in the K line. We've got blue in a CAN bus. So let's take a look at the scope and see what we've got. Now that we're in the wires, we're going to take a look at this. Notice that we have the K line in the yellow and we don't have a signal. We want to go to the meter. Do you see the power? We've only got 2.9 volts to that module. We have a good ground and we almost have battery voltage on the K line. That's, that's a good support for the K line, but we have no power. So this module has a voltage drop and this voltage drop, the wiring comes from the ignition switch back to this module. So we have a problem between the ignition switch and the module. So what I want to do is connect a wire and bridge power externally for right now to see if we can fix this car. Then we're going to need to cut the wire and rewire that circuit so we don't have a problem again. Now that we've bridged the ignition module to the wireless hub module in the rear of the car externally, we're powering the power source at the module. We can see this by supplying the 12 volts on the hub module. Now this module is going to function. Let's take a look at the comm lines. We want to go and we can see that the yellow is the K line. Notice that it's at battery voltage being pulled down and these brakes are data packs. We can also see that the CAN is now transmitting off of a 2.5 voltage. Let's go ahead and we'll record this. We want to zoom in. We can see each packet of data now from the K line and I want you to note that the CAN line is at two and a half volts now. It's not like accessory mode where it's at 1.8 volts being pulled up. It's actually staying at it and you can see that the waveform from the CAN is way easier to see now. Now we can see that that center line or the bias is not at a lower voltage like 1.8, it's at 2.5 being pulled up and down. This is correct. And now we have data packages on the K line. This vehicle is going to be repaired now. So what we're going to do is we're going to go see if this is going to start. Now that we've bridged the ignition module to the wireless hub in the rear externally, we saw that we powered it and we know we have comm lines now. We have a dash that's functional and the vehicle's going to start. This car was diagnosed properly, but to repair the vehicle, we're going to still need to take a wire and splice it in to the power wire that goes to the ignition, run it along the same harness back to the rear hub module. Now that will repair this vehicle to where it's ready to send out for your customer. In order to diagnose these hard problems quickly and accurately, your shop needs the eScope Elite. It's going to make you money.